Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Matt with Green Bar Trading and back with another weekly watch list video. So before I get into all the research that I've poured through to make our week maybe that little bit easier, hit the thumbs up for the video. If you're new, subscribe. We have new videos just about every single day including trade breakdowns almost every day. So uh, yeah, and then we also have our Discord great trading group that I'll link in the description. I'll just show you guys here, uh, right here. So this is our Discord. If you're interested, like I said, that link will be in the description. Uh, trading in a community during these times of the markets I mean, it's just so much better to bounce ideas around uh, with other people. So getting right into the research and what we should know for the week ahead. This is our earnings. Um, this is something that I post every day. You can find this on Twitter. You could follow Earnings Whispers if you want. Um, they break it down nice before the open, after the close. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So if you are interested, you could check them out. That's our earnings for the week. And then we get into our um, important economic data and Fed speakers. Okay. This is something that if you're day trading, like I say all the time, and it's something that we post every morning in our Discord so we know what to expect. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, uh, not much going on the first half of the week, but then on Thursday is when things get a little bit different. So we have the CPI, Consumer Price Index, which is our inflation gauge, okay? We all know that inflation has been roiling the markets, absolutely, you know, crushing uh, people's disposable income. So once all these prices go up for people, especially people on fixed incomes that don't have that ability to, to negotiate those higher wages, you know, it's really tough on them. They see their budgets just getting minimized. So now they can't do some of the other things, uh, leisure activities, um, you know, buying certain things, uh, just have to wait it out, which is not great for the economy. That's why nobody likes this inflation that's going on. So that was uh, on Thursday, we were gonna see that print. And then something I just wanted to show you guys, because this is really, really important. This is the two-year treasury and what it is yielding at the moment. 1.49%, okay? That's the two-year at 1.49%. And now I'm going to show you the 10-year is at 1.73%. Okay, that is not good. That's 24 bips difference. And once you see that flattening of the yield curve, well, that's not a great thing. Okay, the, the flattening of any type of uh, curve like that means that everybody is selling those two year treasury yields, they're getting out of them big time selling on them, making the yield go up. The yields go up when the treasury bonds um, go down. So those yields that have gone up so much over the course of this year is because people are hopping out of those bonds because of inflation. So if they think in the next two years that inflation is only going to get worse, um, why would you want to be in those short uh, dated bonds. So, and then you have on the 10 year, the 10 year went over 2% and then back down. Uh, it came down a little bit once the war got going. 
people started to buy the bonds, the yield goes back down and, um, you know, people are jumping in them kind of like a safe haven. So you have that flattening of a yield curve. Usually a flattening of a yield curve with the shorter term bonds and the longer dated bonds will usually suggest a recession is right around the corner. So just keep an eye on that. And if you didn't know, maybe you learned something and maybe now you hit the thumbs up because that's what these videos are all about. Just to learn something that you may not know. All right, so this is the year, this is our compass, you know, getting into the charts right away. Like I said, I'm trying to make this video short and sweet, although there is always so much to go over uh, to prepare for the week. This is the last six trading days. That is very, very choppy trading. And this is the daily chart. This has been all over the place. So 4275 to 4400. If this breaks to the downside, you have to assume that you're going to retest lows here at 4100. Unfortunately, this is the way a lot of the stock market charts look during this year. I do have to say that, you know, the S&P 500 is trying to hold up a lot better than the NASDAQ. So if we look at the SPY, which is the ETF for the uh, S&P 500, we are bouncing off of this 10% correction zone. It has been massive support. You can see right here, once we get down that 10%, we get a technical bounce. 10%, we get that technical bounce. We opened up low and closed at that, this was that huge reversal day. So we gapped down huge and then closed at the 10% correction zone. And what did we bounce off of? The 15% correction zone. So now this is where things get interesting because if you're looking at this chart and, you know, I study the candlesticks a lot, but in a choppy market, it's tough. This candlestick right here, and I'm just going to remove this, this candlestick, it is, it's a bullish hammer. So, you know, we traded down to that 10% correction zone and then ended up closing off of our lows. And that's where we've had this support. So there's been some demand zone down here. The only issues are for the year, we're in this downtrend. The only times that we got over this trend line was when we gapped over it right here and then sold off back under it. So we gapped over it overnight and then sold under it during our trading sessions. Same thing happened here. We gapped up that day and then just sold right back off. So this trend line here is very um, legit. That is a legit trend line. We have not seen a breakout of this yet. So we're going to be watching that very closely this week. If this 10% area breaks and we go lower and the chart just uh, unfortunately, you know, starts to get weak, this is higher highs. And I mean, this is lower highs and lower lows setting up. And the lower low, unfortunately, would be under 410. So right now we closed at 432. Hopefully, if you're a bull and you see some great deals, which I see some really good deals right now, hopefully we make a stand and we break out of this consolidation. We're, we're getting closer. We're getting tighter. What's also getting tighter is the 200 moving average and the 50 moving average. This is getting closer and closer. We do not want to see these two touch. Because what happened here on the queues is they crossed. 
So this is called a death cross when the 50 goes under the 200. That is not a good sign at all. Um, so, you know, we're trying to bounce here at 334, but, you know, in my mind, the NASDAQ does not look good. Now, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to uh, look at this and realize, um, you know, hey, guys, we're down from highs almost 17%, 17%. At the moment, that's what we're down, 16%, 17% on the QQQ. So we bounced off the 20% here, like I said that day. Can that be re retested? Who knows? Uh, this is making those you know, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. Big rejection here um, that we saw. And, uh, you know, now we're kind of undercutting the past week of trading. So, you know, like I said, if you're going to be going long tech stocks, I would say that's very, very risky at the moment. Um, so that's what we see on the QQQ. We went over the SPY. I'll look at the uh, Dow Jones ETF. Once again, 10% correction zone. We're trying to find a base. Will 10% be the base that we see start to form and then we can start to come back up? There are a lot of stocks in the Dow Jones that are trading at pretty reasonable um, you know, PEs at the moment. A lot of stocks are down because of obvious geopolitical reasons. You have Russia, Ukraine, you have inflation, you have the Fed, you have a year that we're going to be raising rates. So this is just expected. This is really expected. I think even without the war, we would still be choppy, um, chopping around this area. So uh, the war is definitely not helping, obviously not going to help with inflation because the commodity prices are out of control. All right, so we went over that. Let me show you guys the VIX because this is just insane to me. And I want to show you a 10-year of what the VIX looks like. So this is what the VIX is supposed to be at. Now, in, uh, let's see, 2020, we had that huge spike because of coronavirus, and it came all the way back down. And then in 2021, we were hovering around the 1465, not bad. The two years before that, we were hovering around 11, and then we were at around eight. When the market is like that, and you'll have these you know, pops, but they'll come right back down because there's always going to be something that spooks the market and then comes right back down. This right here was spooking the market with the interest rate raises. And then it came right back down to a nice level down here at 11, um, a better environment for those, you know, trending days. You can get into stocks and not have to worry about just total insanity. This right here is just totally insane VIX. Very, very tough to trade when you have moves like this in the VIX. I mean, we've been over 30 now for what seems like two weeks. So this, this is going to be, until the VIX comes back down to uh, whatever this year's you know, low should be around, it's going to be continuing to be tough trading and tough sledding ahead. Um, some of the things that I was looking at was the XLF. This is hammering along this support once, twice, three, and then four times. Nice bullish hammer on uh, Friday. But this is the financial um, ETF. I mean, 
a lot of stocks in this ETF are breaking down. Their charts are broken. And once a chart breaks like this, there could be further downside um, risk ahead. And Bank of America, one of the favorites for so many people, this chart just totally broke. So do I have any faith in the XLF ETF to hold these levels? How can I, when those bank stocks have all broken their charts? We're under the 200 here on the XLF. It was looking so good at the beginning of the year and then it came back up and now we're back here. So if this area breaks, 3681, that is a short play. This chart will then be ruined. Um, and then we'll have to find out where in the world would support be. So that's XLF. Uh, XLE has just been, you know, the RSI on this is just out of control. I am expecting this to 100% pull back. When will it pull back? Who knows, but it won't go straight up forever. Uh, Pfizer, this was a good call we had during last week's uh, watch list video. It's bounced off of this trend line and now it's starting to break out. So I like Pfizer. Um, let's see what else do we have here. Zim, where are you? This is a tremendous, tremendous company. I love this chart. That is a bullish chart. Relative strength. The whole market, like I said in our last week's video, and that's why I liked it, the market is going this way. And we're going this way. I like to be going up. I'm a bull. This is what I like. Higher highs, higher lows, setting in the whole way. Um, they have earnings on uh, three nine. So, and that's going to be before the market opens. So just be aware of that. They're going to be earning a lot of money a lot of money, but it's what they're going to be saying. So I don't usually like to trade during earnings, but um, this gave us a nice pullback buy if anybody was watching this stock. Um, we made this video uh, last week and it's kind of made a nice move back to uh, previous highs here at 75. So if you wanted to take some profits, uh, you could have gotten into, um, you know, a quick trade to previous highs. I still think it's going to break out past that. But, you know, with earnings coming up, we're just going to have to wait that one out and see. Um, another one, AMD. AMD was bouncing off of our trend line down here. So, you know, we were noticing it's following the market. Will it hold up here? Will it hold up? We're starting to get into a more narrow trading zone. And then hopefully we see that resolve to the upside. So AMD, keep it on your watch. We got a trend line here. This is the third bounce. Uh, it didn't bounce that much. You, the NASDAQ market has been a disaster. So, you know, just this trend line here making uh, lower highs the whole way. But we are holding up here and we're not making those lower lows yet. If it ever did, then you would have support down here at 100. Um, so just keep that on watch as well. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, Marriott, this is one that was over um, the 50 moving average. So when something's over the 50, that's bullish. What happened with the market? Okay. The market did not do very well. It broke under the 50. So now we're under the 50, but we are bouncing off of a trend line and got a pretty decent bounce. So I'm going to be watching this, but now that you're under the 50, which is what happened over here, you're going to start to see resistance now at the 50. Hilton is another one. This was having trouble at the 50 moving average. So once it got under it, just could not poke up above it. 
and then rejected really, really hard. It did regain the 200 moving average. But like I said, if you're going to be going long stocks in this type of market, it's definitely risky behavior to do that. Um, there are some really good deals and some really low PEs, but you know, stocks can continue to go down um, even when they are really good deals until investors and those big money uh, institutions start to put some of that capital back to work. A lot of money has been flowed out of equities and into bonds. Uh, the fixed income type of stuff. The commodities have seen huge amounts of bets uh, being poured into those. So what do we do? We have to just trade smart, be smart, take less risk, and you know, come into the market each day. Try to get like a couple of wins. Shut the platform down. There's no reason why you should be watching the stock market all day long. I think that is a big mistake um, that a lot of people make. You know, try to get in there, get get a profit in this market if you can, and just shut it down. Simple as that. So that's what I'm going to be working on this week: patience, trying to take better setups, and not over trading. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you guys back with another one on uh, tomorrow. Take care, guys.